so much for uh, joining me for our uh, drive through Detroit. Uh, I've done it a number of times now, but I, I think I'm starting to get the hang of it. Um, but it's uh, Belle Isle where we've been going. It's, mm -hmm. it's really, uh, really pretty. Yeah, yep. um, so why don't you start, can you tell us a little bit about like what you do for Ford? Oh yeah, I'm like, uh, thank you for having me first of all. So, oh, yeah. um, I have been along with the rest of the team, broader team, we've been developing uh, platforms mm -hmm. generally. Uh, ever, everything from Pivotal Cloud Foundry all the way back in 2016 to now Kubernetes, mm -hmm. PCA, to GCP stuff, Terraform. Gotcha. Every data center platforms, so any hosting platforms, we build, we operate, we manage. Mm -hmm. um, the big part of all of that has been enablement, right? How do we bring people to the platforms? Right. And those are the primary areas that I've been and the rest of the team has been focusing on. I gotcha. And so what do you think, um, you know, you've been doing this for a little bit, what do you think is the biggest like kind of hurdle for, uh, you know, kind of someone coming into your environment? What, is, what do you feel like? I think the biggest hurdle from my point of view, and I think uh, that could be, um, I think they will, it'll resonate very well. It's just the sheer amount of things people have to know. Yeah, yeah. Right. I'm like uh, uh, previously we were talking about you know programming languages. The mm -hmm. other time, like, what do you do? I'm like everything has an API. Everything right. has a CLI. Uh, now, am I supposed to know the GCP APIs, or am I supposed to write my Java app that connects to a Cloud SQL instance? Mm -hmm. So the challenge has been is that how do you steer those I would say sometimes curiosity. Uh -huh. Sometimes I, I don't have time for all of that. Right. Just right. get me, cut to the chase, give me this thing, and I will do it. I think uh, the change in mentality and the change in the adoption things that people talk about is has been very challenging. For example, for a long time, um, you just tell us what do you need. Right. <laughs> could be a spreadsheet, right. check, check, check. Yep. And then we'll turn around in a couple of months and here's your environment, you know, tell us no, let us know if it's not working and invariably there it will not work. <laughs> right, right. There'll be and, something then, wrong. Yeah. and then we go back, fix, and now what we've been doing in the last few years is that we are saying that here's the platforms, here's the complete self-service platforms. Yep. We are onboarding you and we will give you an opinionated stack to get started with it, whether it be pipelines or Terraform or what mm -hmm. have you. But then you assemble all of these things together and we are expecting that you are the SRE of the team to yeah. manage all of those things. That incredible mind shift in, uh, yeah. in a very short time, it's, uh, it's basically like a you know, night and day. Yeah, I still I still remember like on one of my gigs uh, way back in the day, um, having to give the data center a twelve week lead time mm -hmm. on being able to get a server yeah. because they needed to rack it. You exactly. Know? Um, you know stuff like that. Just it's make just sure like, make sure it's connected to the right Ethernet port. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which invariably it wouldn't be. Um, you know, but it's it's just it's so ridiculous now yep. that I can. I, it's funny. Just last night, actually, I spun up a machine um, so that uh, some like kind of external instructors who are teaching at BU but they want to get their students onto Unix mm -hmm. or on Linux, right? And uh, and I'd kind of forgotten about it, and I was like, oh, nuts. And so last night, like, if, like actually, I built the machine, mm -hmm. and then I realized that I didn't like the way it was built, so I trashed the machine, <laughs> and then I built another one, and then I basically logged in, wrote a script for user creation, and then generated a bunch of users, <laughs> and then, you know, sent them an email with the details, and mm -hmm. I think it took less than an hour, yep. you know? Um, and it's just like, you know, this scale is just yeah, so different. And and in the other side of it is also very s scary for mm -hmm. a lot of folks, right? Oh my God, what are you doing? I'm like, you know, I'm yeah. like, one of the things I tell people we are in the car right now is like, think about you're in a car up until right now, you are sitting in a car with blacked out windows. Mm -hmm. Just crack it a little. Yeah, right, right. Just crack it a little, let the light come through yeah. and you will see that you have controls panel in front of you. Yeah. You are in charge. Right. You could go as fast mm -hmm. or as slow you could be as cavalier about it. You can experiment with it. Right. You can burn it down. You yeah. don't have to submit a ticket to burn it down. Right. You can scale right. it up when you want it. And that act of that, you know, you have so much control yeah. is mind boggling. It's right. very difficult for some people to just uh, 
think that you can do that. Right. Yeah. The the allowance factor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The I, that's that's totally true. And I think especially when you talk about um, kind of software developers who are kind of coming from a more strict engineering background. You know, like one of the things I talk about with uh, you know software development a lot is like you know when you're building a building you know or a car mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. you know and you're an engineer like it it doesn't stay together if you don't do it right you know um, like the building falls down yep. whereas like when you do software you basically have endless rewrites you know exactly. you have endless redos yep. um, and invariably you'll need them um, but also it, it's kind of it's a very quite different mindset than you're trained I think when mm -hmm. you when you come up through college or whatever yep. like you're taught that it's like engineering and you're like and I always say it's it I think it's much more like writing you know you rewrite 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 and then eventually you get to something that's good yeah you know um, and there's rules you have to follow but if you're good enough like E.E. E. Cummings for example mm -hmm. you can ignore a certain rule like yes. capital letters right exactly um, but you have to be really good to be able to do that yeah um, I like, the biggest thing is that you can have a broader set of guardrails right yeah don't yeah. do something that hey don't put my service on the public internet yeah. as an example yeah. Yeah. right but within that bounds as long as we can bake those things things into the bounds of the platforms mm -hmm. and the tooling that we are providing, then it provides the so-called safe space right. to experiment and express yourself in right. terms of what you can do. Well, and I think what, what's been really cool for kind of the opposite end of the, that, those types of people, right, has been that with, um, you know, kind of even from the advent of like PaaS was mm -hmm. like, uh, now if I have an idea, I yeah. can just go try it Absolutely. without getting anybody else involved, without mm -hmm. really spending any material yeah. money, yep. um, and just be like, "Hey, you know, I was I was annoyed by this thing at Ford, you know, and so I sat down and I was like, yeah, maybe we could make this thing work this way, mm -hmm. and you can just try it, um, and then you know, and then kind of." And then you, but when you tried it, you also built something Correct. that is actually not production ready, but yep. at least in the in the nearby space, right? Exactly. Um, instead of just a piece of crap that you have to throw out and build again. Correct. Um, and that's such a mindset change, and yeah. it's so nice. At least you know, for somebody like me, I come up with ideas all the time, and I'm like, oh, let me go experiment with this thing. Um, it's it's so empowering if you yeah. think about it. Yeah. And like it's a radical culture shift in the way the organizations are put together and the way organizations work. Yeah. And that's been a, some incredible journey we have been on past five years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Through that, and like uh, uh, some of it worked really, really well. Mm -hmm. Some of it taught us some lessons like you know I'm like we used to handhold people you know do office hours one on one yep quickly realized that you know we can't do that for 10,000 developers right right yes yeah. not enough hours in the day just to do that yeah. so we have to find alternate means of actually empowering and educating and inspiring I think and, right. uh, that's more of the thing well and, and I think one of the other huge problems is the also the re-educating like as in you know things change a lot Correct. and so not only do you have to kind of educate them in the first place you also have to make sure they they understand how to continue to learn right Correct. um and where you know where the next piece of you know change is going to come from mm -hmm. um and uh what's going on over here this is interesting maybe a race or something i don't know police all kinds training. of cones oh yeah maybe police training looks yeah. like defensive driving or something like yeah that. that's kind of cool yeah um i've seen a number of neat things on this uh, <laughs> my little tour um yeah i saw a soccer game i saw yeah. like a race that was about yeah. to take place uh, i've had cool. yeah. uh, geese and <laughs> seagulls and squirrels oh, yeah. all You're trying in, to yeah. die in front of me right on um, lake michigan so yeah yeah um but uh this is a really pretty little island um, the detroit river flying yeah. into the lake michigan yeah it's uh it's quite nice yeah um so, um, so what have you been working on lately? What's what's the kind of thing that you're, you know, kind of hoping to see land sometime in the near future? I think the biggest one that I'm working, at least the rest of the team, I'm like a uh, few things. How can we make uh, what I've been calling it, what generally people have been referring to as inner loops, right? So mm -hmm. we all have been remote. Yeah. And uh, how do you provide uh, uniform workstations or dev, uh, you know, developer spaces? Oh yeah. Here yeah. Pre-plumbed, right. so that uh, you could just go in there and do what you want to do. Right. Uh, but with security and provides a variety, a catalog of things, uh, and, like things that we are looking like Eclipse Shea, for example, right? Yep. Um, I'm a big fan. Yeah. Um, so that's. Uh, 
that's awesome. Uh, and then uh, there are other technologies like cloud vendors are doing, like GitPod comes to mind, right, for example, right. right? So those are the kinds of things that uh, I'm looking, we are looking into. Yeah. Uh, how can we make that easy? The other thing is like, uh, what other abstractions can we build on top of, uh, let's say, cloud, both internal and public, and say that, hey, how do we actually do that? Mm -hmm. um, try more abstract patterns that are easier for developers to get started. Right. I think right. those are the major areas that we are trying to focus, primarily seeing that, hey, um, spending incredible amount of time um, getting people up to speed. Right, uh, right. So the question is, can we actually can we actually reduce that barrier to the entry? Right, uh, that has been a biggest challenge, and uh, quite a bit of time has been at least R and D time we are being spent on uh, doing that. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Um, it, I think it's funny when you when you kind of roll out some of those development platforms. Yep. Um, people don't quite realize how hard they are to build yep. um, because not only are you trying to build like an automated rolloutable platform, but you have to like pick all the tools, right? Correct. And that means you got to make a whole lot of bets mm -hmm. and they're, it's nerve wracking, um, you know, because, you know, it's especially, I talk about this with open source, like with open source, it's so hard oh, yeah. to know if you're like, am I betting on the right horse, you know? Yes. Um, and if you're doing it on behalf of, what'd you say, some 10,000 developers or whatever? Like, like, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's that's, that's real stakes, you know? Exactly. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I think it's it's very, very difficult. I've worked on a number of them over the years, so, yeah. I mean, and it's super hard. The interesting thing becomes is the complexity of so many things. You have to actually coax and cajole so many things together. Yeah, right? yeah. You need to have, you know, what about security? I'm mm -hmm. like, are we going to be everybody's root everywhere? Right, I don't right. know. Yeah. I'm like, uh, but I think in order to do all of those things, sometimes I feel that either A, we are encumbering developers to be thinking a lot more things about it, mm -hmm. or are we saying that uh, we're going to provide an ecosystem where things are easier to get started with. I think that has been a huge focus that we have been trying mm -hmm. to actually uh, make it easier for right. people to get started. And I think it's it works in best interest of everybody, right? So right. people are much more happier, satisfied, things roll out much faster. You don't have to wait for a ticket and, you know, wiggle your thumbs expecting that somebody is going to pull off a magic somewhere. Right, else, right. right. So, yeah, it's a, but it's a really hard line to draw of the where you yes. want to be prescriptive, right? Versus let people kind of like evolve their best practices. Exactly, um, exactly. Because we can't be very prescriptive in the sense that you can't, thou shall not do this thing. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So right, right. That usually does not work well with developers. Um, but uh, yeah, I totally, I totally understand. Um, so let's talk a little bit about uh, Cube by Example. So I know yeah. uh, you've been using it a lot. Um, you know, a lot. What is it like? What does it do for you? So not so much like what's its pitch, but as much as like why do you find it useful with your organization? I think the biggest part that Cube by Example. Mm -hmm got you know the aha moment there was like hey kubernetes is huge mm -hmm. it's just just huge i'm yeah, like yeah. and i can't take somebody who has been just been doing some java the spring boot development and mm -hmm. say hey you figure it out mm -hmm. uh, the best part of a cuba example is that it boils down certain basic primitives that you have to know mm -hmm. sitting in a car you need to know where the accelerator pedal is right. how the steering wheel moves you know how do you turn on wipers but those are the essential human human machine interface kind of thing right yeah so what cuba example does is that there are other things maybe there is an engine there is a carburetor injector you don't have to know about it right so what cuba example does is that like it boils those things down to few primitives that you understand those things. Right. And then what we have done is that we have taken that to a next level. We said, hey, Cuba example gives you this nice bite-sized videos and concepts, mm -hmm. but how do you turn it into practice? Mm -hmm. So let's take an YAML example. Let's annotate it, mm -hmm. saying that what is this line doing? Right. This is how you do a toleration. This is how you do a label on it. And this is how it actually works. Right. And the idea is to take a simple example. In this case, we have taken pod, pod info example that the CNCF uses and built whole this Kubernetes ecosystem around it, right? How do your HPAs works, PDB works, mm -hmm. network security policy works. So that way you can get the little bit theory and small 
bite sized videos from Cuba, for right. example. Right. And then you can immediately turn around and translate that thing to a working thing. Right. And get a feel about it. Right. I think that gives you the sense of immediate, uh, you know, immediate gratification. Right. We are in the age of wherein, you know, everything is DoorDash or everything, yeah. there is an app for everything. Yeah. But it kind of eliminates some of that uncertainty. Mm hmm that you don't have to go figure out something like right, that. You are right. not spending orders of magnitude of time doing Google search or on Stack Trace, yeah, uh, yeah. Track Stack Overflow, track, track right, overflow yeah, yeah. and say that, hey, how do I do this thing? Right, right. So I think that has been um, a great learning tool, at least learning methodology that right. has been very successful, right? So learning by example is something that we found at least internally is it has made things easier. Mm -hmm. The amount of pushback that you get is easier. It's a lot less. And the best part, if somebody asks a question, it's a Git repository, can select those lines. Here is an example. Yeah, right. Write about right. it, a couple right. of blog posts, right. several of referring back to the concepts that are called yeah. in Cuba example. Uh -huh. So it becomes a, a kind of a, a loop wherein you kind of read it, mm -hmm. do it, then read a little bit more, right. do a little bit more. Right. So it becomes an iterative approach to learning. Yeah, and, I mean, and I think it's really important. One of the things I think that uh, developers kind of gloss over sometimes too often is the kind of the theoretical part. Yep. And so, if, but it's very difficult to get them to go read a theory book, right? Yeah, it's um, too much. Isn't so it? if you can give them to them in pieces, I think it really does, it does help a lot. Because yep. we were talking, we were talking about like programming languages before. It's yep. like, it makes a big difference uh, if you, know the philosophy behind a programming language about how you accomplish things exactly. in that programming language. Um, and I, I think a lot of engineers don't don't recognize that, that it, it's important. Um, and uh, yeah, so I was just working on um, the the new learning path for Tecton, mm -hmm. um, you know, and so so the first thing I do is explain um, CI, CD, yeah, exactly. and CD again, right? exactly. Because yep. you know, and that oh yeah, we have two of the same acronym that mean two different things, uh, mm -hmm. and interchange, but all three of them will be used interchangeably to mean all three things. Yes. Yeah, um, so you know, so getting a little bit of that context, I think, is also helpful because then yeah. you know how people are going to talk about it and exactly. what they mean. Um, but then you also want to actually just you know go build a trigger, you know, in, exactly. in Tecton. Exactly, yeah, exactly. So that's totally cool. Uh, uh, sometimes if you think about it, it uh, goes back to, you know, ergonomics or things people talk about, man-machine interfaces. Mm -hmm. It's all the same if you think about it. I'm like, it's, these are all the mechanisms that we have provided and we have abstracted them behind concepts and right. terms. Right. Uh, but if we go back and, you know, think about how we learn language. Right. If we, if we can actually connect with tech in that terms, yeah, it becomes much more easy to eternalize those concepts. Right, right, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, like I, you know, I teach I teach an introduction to data science class. Yeah. you know, I kind of run into this a lot. Um, and uh, you know, and so what we do in that class <laughs> is kind of give this overview. It's almost like an overview of data science. But yep. the idea is that student who walks in has had no programming experience whatsoever. Yeah, exactly. Um, and they learn Python as an like as a way to accomplish some other goal. Um, and I think it really does help them uh, kind of wrap their head around it. Yep. You know, even the ones that believe that they can't program, you know, or don't know how a computer exactly. works and stuff. And and you're just like, oh no, you just do this, you know, little bit of code here and it'll solve this problem over there. Yeah, yeah. I mean, particularly it's very satisfying. Yeah. Like when you yeah. see something run, you did something, yeah. Yeah. you see something running, right. and no matter how stupid or how simple that might seem, yeah. but it is immensely gratifying saying that, yes, look what a cool thing I did. Right, right. Yeah, 100%. I was talking about it with uh, that exact thing with uh, Josh Berkus mm -hmm. uh, yesterday, I guess, or, uh -huh. or something. Sometime before now, um, and we were both saying how we have a couple of very minor PRs that were accepted into really big projects, yeah. uh, and he has one in HA Proxy, mm -hmm. and uh, and we we're both like, you know, like we didn't really do very much, but at the same time, it's amazing, right? Yeah. Like you feel so good about it that yeah. you're like a part of this, you know, thing, and exactly. You know, and then whenever you build something, it's you know, I think I don't, I think people don't realize like. You know, programmers are usually in it for the the gratification of like, hey, I built that thing and exactly. it works. You know, yep. Um, and it's even upright most of the time. <laughs> you know? Yes, that's the beauty. I'm like, I think, and 
And I think the whole goal we have been trying to tell people and trying to change the culture within the organization is around that concept saying that, hey, you are in control of your destiny. Right, right. right. So, right. but you are not alone in it. Yeah. We, yeah. we want to help with you. But the important thing is that only investments we are asking from you is curiosity and mm -hmm. little time. Right. 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 Yeah. So if you're curious and if you are willing to invest some time, we are willing to meet and pair and partner with you to get you there. Right. Right. And we will learn. We all will learn around. I'm like, no, I'm not an expert at everything under right. the sun. So. Yeah, it's like uh, every time uh, you know when I've you know run teams in the past is uh, one of the things I make every new member to the team do is um, add, edit, or update um, the onboarding guide for the mm -hmm. team. You know, it's like because the person who's best available to uh, recognize where the flaws are is in the our user. onboarding guide is the guy who's, yeah, using, the guy it. who's using it most recently, yep. right? Um, and uh, but I think it, it really does help to instill in the team like a, a part of the community because now you've all committed to the yep. onboarding component. Exactly. But I think it's kind of in the same way as like, if you can kind of take the first step, mm -hmm. I can kind of help you, you know, c continue. Yeah. Um, but you gotta help me take the, you've gotta take kind of the first step. Exactly. Um, and uh, you know, and then sometimes there's steps along the way that you also have to kind of commit to. Mm -hmm. um, but it does, I think it really does instill you know, more of a community around the thing if if you kind of are electing to be engaged. Exactly, you know? I'm like, it's, it's, it's kind of a loan, right? Yeah. You take a loan, you have to put some investments down. Mm -hmm. There's some collateral, so that means yeah. that you are engaging in it, and, right, right. and there is a reason for you to engage in it, and the collateral that you're putting in here, in this case, is time and effort. Right, right. And what you're getting back is this immense gratifying sense that, hey, you could do something on your own. Right, right, yeah, totally. Um, but uh, we were also talking a bit with uh, Becky, who was uh -huh. saying that, um, you know, you are all doing a lot of, like, active hiring of Absolutely. software developers. We um, are hiring, and I think, uh, come see us in our booths if you are in, in the, um, at KubeCon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or we, the same positions are at careers.co.com as well. Yeah. And, uh, well, a lot kind of, of things that we are doing is all so much based on technology. Yeah. Well, I was kind of saying is that like, I think, you know, you're a lot of, you know, developers may not think about the fact that how much software is going into like in the actual car these days, yes. which I think is getting a little more obvious, but also in how much software there is to like make the cars, oh, right? Yeah, and there's a lot of really neat software there. It's all oh. software from your yeah, drawing boards. Think about it. I'm right. like, uh, we don't even make clay models anymore. Oh, Everything yeah, yeah. is like digitized and right. 3D rendered. So unless right. the final version comes out, people make clay models out of it, right? So right. Uh, everything is digital, everything is data, right. everything uh, gets to evolve fast and that's the beauty of software. Right, and, right. Uh, yeah, every company is becoming a software company. Every yeah. company, I'm like, the other thing that I will say is that we live in the age of gadgets. Mm -hmm. Typically, we carry those gadgets in our pockets. Mm -hmm. This happens to be a gadget you sit in. Right, 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 <laughs> right? exactly. So, right. So hopefully there will be a day we can hail it. Right, yeah. Right, it'll yeah. go drop it'll us some like, and it'll come to come get us, and it'll go do its thing. Yeah. And uh, hopefully that day is soon, and all of the day can only be realized if we have great devs. Right, exactly. No, I completely agree. I uh, I am a big fan of the, like, I'm waiting for, like, William Gibson's world, you know? <laughs> it's like, you know, and, and what I what I was hoping I was contributing at Red Hat, actually, was another little step towards that. Yeah. Um, because I think, you know, it's it's where I want to see, you know, without the dystopia, of course, but, you know, the <laughs> as far as the technology and the, like, yeah. and just every, you know, it's just kind of, in, it's just around, Correct. you know, we don't have to, we don't yeah. have to open a computer. It's yes. just there. It's just you know? like pervasive computing. It right. just happens, right? So. Right. Which I, I really think is very cool. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thanks so much for coming. Cool. I really appreciate it. Uh, you. And, uh, you know, we'll be doing a, a panel together later. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, let's call it for there. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks for having and thanks for the opportunity. I'm like looking forward to be engaging with uh, all of you online. Right. Right.